Okay, we are back in downtown and I just want to show airfield operations and in downtown it's a little bit different than uh, Red Storm. You're going to just mainly see the DRV player or North Vietnamese player using airfields in this because some of their defensive flights may start on the ground and then take off to try to intercept the U.S. bombing raids. So uh, this is primarily just a feature used by the North Vietnamese in this game. And we're just outside the Kep Airfield Air Base uh, here in this example. And this was actually bombed in 1966, I think. And there's Kep, and here's the airfield. So the airfield here is a major airfield as opposed to a minor airfield on the map, which has just like a red circle. Um, kind of like up here, right there. This is a major airfield. So the difference to note between the two of them is major airfields can have any number of flights take off and land each raid. So here we've got a unready MiG flight and a ready MiG flight. Well, if I could just that are ready to take off. And let me just move this. A major airfield can have any number of unready flights sitting at it. So normally this would be stacked like this. I just wanted to show you these arrows because we'll have to use these in a second here. So you'd kind of stack them like this and it can be a little bit tight. Um, so it might be a good idea to, I don't know, I'd almost like an off map air base thing or something like that. Um, so major airfields are a big component of, they can handle a lot of traffic. Now, some of these may be open or closed, depending on the scenario. The scenario is going to, the scenario is going to take you and tell you which airfields are open. You can also close an airfield if the U S player, um, bombs an airfield and you get a success of one or greater, and that forces the airfield to be closed. So you can literally bomb airfields in this game. All right, I'm just going to move this here so we can see that. Now, flights, the North Vietnamese flights, they begin a raid on the ground at an airfield. They may begin. They don't always. Uh, flights on the ground may not move except to take off, okay? And there's three states, ready, unready, and revetted. Revetted is where they're kind of like tucked away into a shelter. Uh, the planes are like parked. And if they're unready, it will take a period of time in the game for these to get ready to take off. So if the scenario is like super short, you know, you probably don't want to have to go through this. Uh, unready flights take five turns. Revetted flights take 10 turns to be made ready. Um, and this is usually done in the admin phase. There's a, there's a little admin phase here, if I can find it. I, I never have my charts ready, do I? Okay, there you go. So, got a little admin phase down here. This is where that's going to all be taken care of. Um, now, if you have an unready flight and you want to move it, you think that maybe the airfield's going to be bombed and maybe they're going after some of your parked planes, you can actually move an unready flight into revetment and that takes um, five game turns. That happens in the admin phase. And ready flights that you have that might want to take off, these can be made unready at any time. Now, flights on the ground have a target profile of D. And if you remember the dive bombing video I did for downtown, you have to have a target profile and D's like one of the worst. Now, if they go into revetment, that target profile goes up to a B because they're in a shelter. All right, now you might be wondering, well, how do you take off? You place the flight on the airfield and it's flipped to its undetected side. So all flights that are gonna take off, they're gonna be undetected. Let me just move the unready one out of the way. So he's gonna to wanna to take off. They always start undetected. Now you know there's a, there's a difference between visually identified and visually detected, and that's what always threw me off in this game. So he's undetected. And what you wanna do then is, you can also do dummies. You can use dummy flights to try to fool the US player and you can put a dummy flight out there. Um, there's an optional rule here where the North Vietnamese player doesn't place any flights on the map 
and you keep the readiness information secret from the U.S. player, like on a scrap of play paper. And like when the flight takes off, then the counter appears on the map. Um, but if the U.S. player is within one hex of the airfield and has line of sight, all the air units are placed on the map. I think that's kind of interesting. You just see something like a plane take off, you know, and then you're like, oh, what's this? We got some activity over here. Um, now you want to be facing in the direction of one of the takeoff arrows printed on the edge of the hex. So you want to face this way or I don't know, I'm bad with tweezers or this way. You can't have them like facing up. He's got to be facing. Good Lord. You know what? I'm just going to use my fingers. Uh, you got you to be facing one of these arrows here and it'll be the same when you have to land too. So you're going to be facing this way. This is ready to move him out of the way here. And on the first turn of movement, the flight remains in the airfield hex and is marked with a deck altitude. So you're going to come up and when he's ready to move, uh, you'll say, okay, he's moving, put him there and you put this next to him. Okay. Now he, he's marked with a deck altitude. That flight cannot initiate air to air combat on the first turn. On the second turn, right? So the turn goes, the whole turn goes by. You're ready to move again. He can move movement points equal to half of his speed. So this is a MiG, eh, I don't have these memorized yet. It's a MiG-21. He's on deck. A MiG-21 on deck, uh, you'll look at your aircraft data chart. We'll say this is a uh, F-13 fish bed. Uh, combat three. So he'll move half of that and you actually round up. So he'll be moving this way like this, half of that would be 1.5 round up to two. And that's kind of how they take. So you see, he's already, he's already gone. And then we want to put this back over here like so. And he's up in the air, very low altitude though. Now on the third and any subsequent turns of movement, he moves normally. So then he'll go back, he'll have his, you know, he can pick, oh, let's do dash or however you want to do it. So like he could say, I'm going to dash next turn and move four and then you would you'd have to uh you know if you dash you use a fuel point um and if you need a good fuel you know tutorial check out that uh shoot what's that guy's name oh my gosh i'm really bad tc's gaming corner he he kind of has a better i didn't want to do ones that he did already but he has a video tutorial up of how to move but yeah, you use a fuel point and you just you could get your fuel full movement and you're good to go and you can make your turns and kind of take off and you're all set and go up another altitude band. So that's kind of how you take off. Now, when you want to land, it takes three turns to land. And once you've begun, the procedure cannot be stopped or interrupted unless you get attacked. All right, so begin landing, you have to be on the deck and at combat throttle so you'll want to come in <clears throat> let's move this guy if we want to come in on that combat throttle speed deck altitude okay and you select any speed between one and the maximum combat speed right the flight must end movement in a hex adjacent to the airfield so we'll be like uh let's see here will be one two three. Oh, i think also you have to make sure that the forward arc, the airfield's in the forward arc and it's pointing in the same direction as one of the takeoff arrows. So we better come in this way. All right, so we'll be going like uh, one, two, three, going in the direction of the takeoff arrow. Oh, whoops, <laughs> can't see. So we're right next to it, right? And we're coming in for a landing. And then in the next game turn, instead of regular movement, the flight advances into the airfield hex. Well, let's say he's been identified here. So he'll advance into this hex in the next turn. All right, he's coming in. And on the f he doesn't change altitude, by the way, so keep that deck thing on there. Now, on the following turn, instead of regular movement, it lands. A flight that has landed is unready and may not take off again in that scenario. Okay, just a heads up, in that scenario. So he comes in, he lands. And we tag them with an unready marker, like so. Now, a few notes I made about this. Oh my gosh, okay. Um, 
Oh, I already covered them all. The profiles for the flights. Oh, that was easier than I expected. Okay, so that's really it for uh, airfields and airfield operations. And just keep in mind that you can bomb these. And if there's a date next to the airfield, it does not exist prior to that year. So some of these are going to have dates next to them, and which means you can't, you know, it's not there on the map, basically. But that's about it. But it's interesting. You could stack up a bunch of flights here. If you're the North Vietnamese player, maybe you don't want them in the air, right? So you kind of stack them up at the base if you're using that optional rule where they're all hidden. And if it's a major airfield, you can put a bunch of unready flights on there and then kind of just have them pop off and, and they take off and there you go. Um, what I'm wondering is, <clears throat> well, once it, it's not, okay, so you can't actually use, that's right, you can't actually use a dummy flight. I think you'd be detected. Oh, that's interesting. I think we'd actually have to use a generic counter for this. I might have done that wrong. I think this is supposed to be a generic counter. Because remember, um, oh my gosh, I, have, I feel like I'm running out of room sometimes. Uh, remember that um, until it is visually identified, a flight is represented by a generic counter. That's when you identify, right? And you can still detect it. So technically, that should be a generic counter. And let me see if I can get that for you here. I do love this discussion. It's always the thing that tripped me up. So this should be a generic counter. I need to flip that over like that. So we would have a generic counter here. Okay. And he would take off. Actually, he wouldn't even be that either. Wow, that yeah, that's actually kind of, that's nasty. Generic counter would just take off and that's that. Um, then you would have to detect it in the detection phase. So say you detected it, that's great. Then you'd have to visually identify it. Then you swap out. You go, oh, it's, you know. If you identify it and detect it, then you would put it like that. Say you haven't, say you've detect, or oh, man, good Lord. <sighs> say you've visually identified but don't detect, which is possible because you could have a bad die roll, then you would put it like this. The whole detection and dummy thing still trips me up. It's very confusing. But I'm assuming that when you take off, you want to use a generic counter like that. So that was my fault. So it should look like that. Yeah, I didn't want to misrepresent the little demo here with the wrong counter, so don't forget about that. So you'd have to detect this. Then you'd have to visually identify it, and that's where you swap that out and you put that in there. And don't forget that visual identification is different than detection. So just a heads up. All right, so I didn't want to misrepresent that there. Okay, uh, that's about it for airfield operations. Now, downtown... Um, has a few different detection things, but I'll let you figure that out in the rule book. It's really, the main thing they have is this um, GCI level, it stands for Ground Control to Intercept. And um, the North Vietnamese ground controllers can only handle a limited number of aircraft at a time. So it, there's a little bit of a detection change in this game compared to Red Storm, but um, that's in the downtown rule book on page 13. I don't, think, I don't really need to demonstrate that, but just a heads up on if you have all these flights, you know, and they take off and stuff, it will affect that that uh, GCI level, which will um, overwhelm their controller abilities, and it makes it easier for their flights to be detected. So, okay, uh, I think that was about it. I, you know, the runway stuff is pretty interesting. Uh, the uh, ready flights are sitting on an airfield runway. Unready flights are positioned on an airfield taxi or apron. Revetted aircraft are in bomb-proof revetments. Okay. And that is it, runway operations in downtown. I haven't done one for Red Storm yet. I didn't really go over them. Uh, and then also in uh, Bloody April, the World War I game, uh, I think Eagle of Lil, or what is it, the expansion... Um, has a add-on where you can, it has like aerodrome, aerodome operations where flights can land and take off again or something, but I don't have a copy of Bloody April right now, so um, that game, I think that that game is way more complicated than these two. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's crazy with the wind and all that garbage, so um, perhaps one day I will look back into that. Okay, that is it, and the only thing we really need to cover is probably like 
standoff jamming and things like that. But otherwise, the the downtown rules uh, very similar to all the tutorials um, on TC's uh, gaming channel or and gaming corner uh, YouTube page. They're very similar. Um, downtown and Red Storm, there's just major differences. And again, downtown, probably the easier game to get into because the technology is, is I mean, look at the, this is it for the communist flight card compared to what you're dealing with in Red Storm. Uh, so I would, you know, if you can get your hands on this or maybe Elusive Victory, yeah, Elusive Victory steps it up a little bit, but either one of those would be kind of an, an entry point for uh, then later tackling Red Storm. Now, the only thing we have left to do is an actual dogfight in the air, uh, where I have not done that in either game. I've just done the BVR, you know, air-to-air air -air missile launches before you get into a dogfight. Uh, so we can probably do dogfights in downtown, um, and that system piggybacks into Red Storm. You just have a lot more things to remember before you make your die rolls and stuff like that. All right. Thanks for watching and we'll get some more videos up here in the coming week, hopefully.